Good morning, everyone. Today is the town council regular meeting Wednesday, May 5th, 2021 via go to teleconference. Uh, we will now begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. A couple things before we start. Dennis is away on vacation. We're supposed to be calling in. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, Christine will be half an hour late and Carol is away on vacation. So we are down three council members for the meeting today. Um, so I just want to let everybody know that going into this. Um, hopefully Dennis will pop in shortly. We're trying to get a hold of him and um, uh, Carl's on his way in. So he had some traffic coming in. Um, so we will, we'll, we'll leave the pledge today uh, and move along to number two. But we won't take the thunder away from Dennis. Um, so uh, moving up to number two, which is the visitors. Are there any visitors on the call that would like to be recognized at this time? Any visitors on the call that would like to be recognized? Okay. All right, hearing none, we can move on to number three, which is the approval of the minutes for the April 21st, 2021 meeting. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Good morning, Chris. It's Andrea Rue. Okay. Sorry, good morning, Chris. It's Andrea Rue. Okay. We're kind of breaking up. You there? Could we just finish the motion on the minutes? Yes. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, we, have, we have a first. Do we have a second? Um, sorry, it's Andrea Rowe. Okay, one second. We just need to finish our motion, and then we'll get right back to you. Do we have a second on the motion for the minutes? Understood. Any further discussion? All in favor of the approval of the minutes, April 21, 2020. Aye. Abstain? Second. Okay, we're good. All right. Um, all right, we'll move back now to uh, Andrew. Sorry, good morning, Chris. Good morning, members of the town council. I was unavailable to get my audio to click in. Sorry about that. <clears throat> That's okay. Um, I would like to take a moment this morning to address the members of the town council as the chair of the Clinton Democratic Town Committee. On March 25th, I submitted for your approval on behalf of the Clinton Democratic Town Committee, a request for the appointment of Allison Roberts and John Olson to the Board of Assessment Appeals. This recommendation was a request and then a unanimous emergency vote for Allison Roberts to be moved from an alternate to a full seat and for John Olson to fill her vacated position within 24 hours of the unexpected resignation of elected Democrat Dolly Mazzetti. Mr. Olson addressed an email to the council with his outstanding qualifications on April 18th, prior to the next meeting, your last meeting, and in response to your concerns, and indicated that he will not be attending the meeting. I will remind you that as an elected position, this seat is to be filled by a qualified Democrat according to state statute. Mr. Olson has served professionally as a caring volunteer like many of us. He has represented the Democrats on boards and commissions for over 30 years. None of us are perfect. And if you are genuinely looking at the questionable instances and holding that as your bar, I would ask you to review recordings of the behavior of some on this very council. I respectfully request that you give thought as to how you handle this endorsement as it will have longstanding consequences and repercussions for our community. Having a board operate without two alternates is not representative of good governments. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Okay, we now will move on to number four, which is the appointments or reappointments. Um, so the CRAD Board of Directors, we need to appoint somebody from the town uh, to the CRAD Board of Directors. Uh, this is a position that other town uh, representatives are normally the town manager, CEO, first selectman, mayor. Um, so at this point, obviously, I think that we should put forth uh, Carl Kilduff as our CRAD Board of Directors representative. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, this is Tim speaking. Okay. Uh, I had a request uh, from Christine that she would like to table this 
a discussion until she was able to join the group at about 8.30. So I would like to make that motion. Okay, is there a second to that motion? I'll make a second. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, we will move that then to, I guess we can, Mary, can we just leave that open then until Christine uh, is in attendance at the meeting? Thank you. Hey, you. You can move that further down on the agenda. You want to move it down to, what she said she'd be here half an hour? She said that she should be here uh, around 8.30, quarter of nine is what I, I heard. Mm -hmm. All right, then I guess we're just going to let, let's move it all the way down to we'll move it after number 12 and put it after the town council uh, committee liaison reports. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to number five now, which is the report from the Water Pollution Control Commission. We oh, have Matt Kennedy and Mayor Peterson on the call. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I had uh, another uh, discussion I'd like to put under number four appointments and reappointments. Okay. Uh, because of the situation uh, regarding John Olson, mm -hmm. I would just like to, uh, if possible, make a motion that we vote on John's appointment uh, without his uh, involvement in a discussion with the group. I, I don't think if he's made that decision uh, on his own, and, and I've talked to him about it, and he has, I feel that it's only appropriate that we don't delay uh, this uh, alternate position uh, to to continue. So if he's uh, given us permission to go ahead and vote yay or nay on his appointment, I would uh, make the motion that we go ahead and vote on it uh, today. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, if there's no second to that, I guess I guess just the, I guess the thing that I'll just address to this team real quick is that uh, first yes, of all, we're down a lot of, we're down a lot of members, uh, council members at this meeting. So um, you know to move forward with that right now, we don't have one second, and okay, we don't have Christine, we don't have Carol, and we don't have Dennis on the call. And obviously, as a council, we did do we did take a vote to table it, and the reason we tabled it obviously was for further discussion, but it was a unanimous. Um, approval. So at that point, I feel all the members of the council should be here. Should we do and, and you know move forward with any action on that appointment? I think they all need to be involved in a, at least a minimum of conversation if, if there's a motion to vote uh, on the table. That's just my Can I then bring, bring up a motion uh, at the next meeting then? Is that appropriate? Um, I'll plan to do so. Okay, Mary, is that something we can do now? Or we can discuss that as, as, as an agenda item uh, for the next meeting? Right. Okay, all right, so let's do that. We'll circle back with it, because again, hopefully at the next meeting, everybody will be here, everybody be available for a meeting and we, and we can have a discussion. Because obviously it, it's gonna be a discussion at a minimum. Uh, the person that made the motion to table is not even at the meeting today. Um, so we just wanna make sure that if we're gonna move forward with this, because we feel that this is the avenue that we wanna take, Everybody should be available to have their opinions and discussions on. Eric, did you have something? Oh, the 19th, Chris, you think? Uh, I do, you I gotta go somewhere else, my Wi-Fi. Okay. So the 19th well, we would be when we, we talk. talk about the next meeting. Uh, yeah. You good? I got it, I got it. Okay. All right, so now we good? Everybody good there? All right. Okay. Um, all right. So finally, number five. Thank you for waiting patiently, Matt and Laura. A uh, report from the Water Pollution Control Commission. So I'll turn it over to Matt. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, as most of you folks know, my name is Matt Kennedy. I'm the chairman of the Water Pollution Control Commission. I have Laura P Peterson with me this morning. 
in case I'm too groggy to think of some of the most obvious things that we're up to. And she's been graciously acting as our um, as our interim clerk on the on the commission. So I just want to publicly thank her for that. Um, let's see. As, as far as what is WPCC up to, I kind of prepared a short outline here, and I can try blowing through it, and you can cut me off at any time. But I think it's important to understand, you know, kind of the basic of our function to understand what it is we're working on. As most of you folks know. You know, we're we're a group that functions as a water pollution control authority under state statute. Um, in this, you know, our our biggest job is design and planning around the idea of uh, of facilities. You know, and since we are a town that has septic systems, um, you know, we don't currently have any specific you know uh, sewer treatment facilities outside of uh, these private and or Connecticut DEP regulated systems like, you know, the high school or the outlets or something of that sort. Um, um, so we've 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 done that. We've prepared this facilities plan. It's our, our prime one of our primary functions and it was submitted to DEP and we got a conditional approval in October 2017. The planning work has been reimbursed or is uh, reimbursable by the Connecticut Clean Water Fund at a rate of 55%. So that has been great. And that's been something I've sold to you guys for years that, you know, trying to understand the value of it and understand the economics. Um, the the basis for it, and I know folks have asked me this before, but the, the basics for the basis, excuse me, for needing this facilities plan is uh, a consent order that the town entered into in October 10th, 1997, which was a response to an administrative pollution abatement order. So that's how this came to be. And it outlined a bunch of steps and we've been working through those steps. Um, the facilities plan is, as you, you know, may have heard, read, I may have, you know, presented to you before, um, has recommended the construction of some facilities to service kind of uh, community systems to uh, service some primary project areas in the town. There are six or seven project areas, but there's three primary ones that you know we talk about because they're the uh, the, the big whoppers. Um, those three that have been identified for decades include what we refer to as Long Hill, which is an you know a, a, a residential neighborhood of 378 homes and covers a bunch of neighborhoods up on long, up and off of Long Hill uh, Road. Uh, we have Coastal, which is uh, 716 parcels um, covers a bunch of beach communities um, uh, along the coast. Some are covered, some aren't, and it all depends on the geology and and uh, how close you are to bedrock, how close we are, how close septic systems are to groundwater it determines whether or not these things can function. Um, downtown center is one that's been getting a lot of uh, attention the past year or so, um, and that's 33 mixed use properties that happen to be you know, kind of uniquely, um, you know, potentially detrimental to the to the environment just based on their proximity to the water and the fact that they're mixed use. They get a, you know, traditionally they've gotten, you know, had a, had a harder life than many of the uh, residential systems. Um, of note is that, you know, the downtown planning area covers many more um, facilities. There's downtown west and downtown east, which are another 1,100 homes. Uh, just you know, just keep that in mind that there's those other properties that we're working on as well. And there's some few, a few outliers um, in Stanton Road, Cedar Island, uh, our manufactured home communities um, that are also part of the planning discussion. So the bare the bare basics, and you know, this leads to what we've been doing um, is that. With the exception of the Rocky Ledge um, study area, which I haven't talked about yet, that's 120 homes. Um, the recommended plan is to take wastewater from areas that can't handle the volume in the ground with individual systems and move it to several treatment plant locations and groundwater recharge locations. So unlike some big cities that have a sewer treatment plant that goes right into their harbor, our harbor is formed in such a way where we can't um, discharge right into the harbor. Um, so that's, uh, these potential areas have been, uh, carefully vetted through a big process to show fairness, you know, um, over many years now. And, um, you know, because these, these properties will eventually need to be leased or purchased in order to, 
to have a treatment plant in order to recharge that treated water into the into the ground. So and the important part I was I wanted you guys to at least understand or at least be uh, knowledgeable of is that all of those other properties that aren't part of these three solutions need to be handled in some way, shape, or form. And the way that this has been negotiated with the state is that it would be considered a decentralized wastewater management area, which means that the individual septic systems will remain. So it doesn't become a huge infrastructure project for the town, but there will have to be kind of an enhanced inspection and cleaning program. So not much different than all of us are doing right now, but under the consent order, the area was identified. So it needs to have its own um, it needs to have, have it have its own solution. So the conceptual approval has several conditions, and this is the work that we've been working on. The, the conditions are, you know, getting some additional information that DEP has asked for, engineering information on um, downtown center, as well as Long Hill and uh, Stanton Road and um, Old Post Road, which is a, a potential uh, discharge location. Uh, we've completed we've completed most of this testing work and gotten engineering reports and we're you know making an analysis of that stuff one of the other items of the conceptual approval is continued good faith and proactive efforts to implement this work you know it's clearly spelled out in their letter to us and there are a bunch of um, good faith efforts that the town has been taken and we've received um you know we've received you know positive feedback from the state uh for those good faith efforts um and that kind of leads to the, the actual projects that we've been working on um kind of our our number one project and, and number one um you know uh, duty and 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 uh, focus is to keep momentum so that all of this engineering work that's been done over these years is not completely lost to 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 father time um and then it's also to manage those good faith efforts um which enable the facilities plan to focus on just the bad areas as opposed to all the rest of our homes um so you know good faith efforts such as the pump out ordinance that requires all of us to clean our septics that's something we manage it's a town ordinance it has you know it's been spelled out it was a uh, um it has enforcement actions and it's been extremely successful but it does take a lot of effort to keep it to keep it afloat so that's one of the things we've been working on well and it's it's a much better solution than expanding a giant infrastructure project. Um, another thing that's you guys hear about often, I wanted you to at least hear about it from me, is the um, is the pump out boat that we have in the harbor. Um, town pays a small portion of this Connecticut DEP's program. Um, I believe it's something on the order of fifty thousand dollars a year. We pay seven. Um, Cedar Island Marina, uh, I think, graciously runs this program and you know pays at least double what we pay in their in-kind work and then are reimbursed for the rest of the state and it, it it serves our number one goal of 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 water pollution control you know we all enjoy this beautiful town and for many reasons it's natural resources and this protects that and uh has had our full support as well as you know health department and state of connecticut there's there's been a lot of uh, support for that um so what other projects we we're trying to um you know focus the specific effort on the areas that have the most bang for the buck and bang for the buck would be um as small a project as we can see the biggest um we can, we can see the biggest return on and i know you folks are familiar with the rocky ledge area water main extension project um in this downtown center study that's been going on for the past year or so as being two areas that are seen as relatively smaller projects the you know five to nine million dollar projects as opposed to much bigger projects that are a, a lot harder for us to discuss um so uh that's that's one thing another thing is state mandated monitoring uh you guys see it in on my in our budget every year um but there's monitoring around the landfill that allows the state it allows the town to stay in compliance with the order from the state on our our closed landfill, which is surrounded by people's homes who drink who drink from their walls, so um, that that's a tricky one. But we do all of the state mandated um, sampling up there, and we look at the data. We supply the data to the state. There's also mandated um, monitoring wells and catch basins, uh, and the Indian River public water supply well, a bunch of other things that are um, 
by law, we have to do this sampling. We have to monitor this stuff and stay on top of it. Um, we also take a look at the Morgan High School septic data when that comes through. Um, our, our public services project, I will call it, but our public services is having someone in the land use office who's, who's um, you know, trained in this type of stuff. You know, Carol Walter was trained in this for years and did an amazing job at it. And we actually haven't had a full-time clerk in over a year. So there's been a, an efficiency noted there for budget purposes, but there also has been an inefficiency in that um, you know, people people don't have access to that knowledge and, and people have left messages on phone calls that don't get returned. Laura and I do the best we can, but we you know we both have 60 hour a week jobs and keep us keep us busy. So that's um public services I, I feel is important. Um and just to wrap things up, um you folks are familiar with our capital budget and our operating budget at this point. We don't currently have a capital project but our operating budget really just boils down to engineering support, our staff, as I just mentioned, and uh, the laboratory budgets and the ordinance enforcement. Um, so financing, you know, how, do, how in the world do you finance these projects? And that's the biggest, uh, the biggest question. It's been working with you folks, been talking with Carl, working with the state, it's the biggest challenge facing our community when it comes to handling, uh, correctly handling our wastewater issues. Um, we have a funding funding study that's ongoing right now, and we will prepare, we will um, present this uh, to you and Mr. Kilduff soon. Um, you know, I'm excited to at least have something to talk about in real world dollars, so that we can all just have a uh, an understanding of what is this? Is there any way this could possibly ever happen? And what can we all do as a community and as community leaders to try to do the right thing by the taxpayer and the right thing by our by our town in general? Um, so we're exploring lots of, you know, funding sources and uh, supplemental for funding sources that don't involve, you know, the tax base and, and the users of the system and uh, continuing those discussions. So that's kind of my basic outline that shows kind of why we exist, what we're doing, what's fo what's forcing our hand to do this and, and kind of where we stand with with um, with progress with that work. Um, um, obviously, Laura and I can uh, field some questions. I know you have a full agenda today, but you know, if there's if there's questions that you folks have, uh, you know, please feel free. I know I threw a lot at you there. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Any questions? I, I do have a question. That's uh, Christine Gopil. I have a question. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. You can. Um, May I just have two questions for you. Um, one is, um, do you have a good sense of how much money we have spent over the past, I would say, I think it's five years now, when we restructured the land use office to provide that service, um, how much money we've spent in both training and, um, you know, looking at the permits and all that um, to move forward in the process? That's one question. Two is when we start looking at the capital investment to be made, um, um, are you, you know, have you had discussions on the committee related to the federal funding that's going to be coming down to the town? Because it's quite substantial. Um, and these types of projects are exactly what the federal money was um, really tagged for. Um, so, I, you know, I'd, I'd like to know where your thoughts are from the committee standpoint. Sure. I mean, as, as far as a dollar number for you know, use, you know, spent on our, you know, our our, our, our clerk and managing our program outside of engineering dollars. A um, little bit difficult for me to quantify. I mean, the employee is not extremely expensive. Um, it's an entry level kind of clerk, um, land use clerk uh, uh, position. Um, you know, you guys see our budget every year, you know, the, the budget, which is typically 80000 to $100,000 has that line item of approximately $30,000 for a clerk, plus or minus. Um, so that's that's been going on for a while now. We've also been um, probably spending somewhere between five and $10,000 a year on a consulting engineer to provide um, support to the office. Um, there, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that's not quite getting done um, that, you know, I feel needs to get done, but I'm I'm not sure what the best way is to answer that um, component of your question. 
Um, but there's, there is a lot to keep the thing afloat you know, and uh, to keep the good faith effort going and to make sure that the ordinance doesn't fall so far behind that, you know, we're not following through. We need to have a little bite to the ordinance in order for the ordinance to really have any value whatsoever. And, you know, without following up on the, uh, um, the hard part of it, the hard part of it, which is, you know, pressuring our neighbors in order to do, you know, what the ordinance says to do without doing that part, you know, the ordinance is kind of just, is floundering in a way other than, you know, trying to keep the public information out there. Most people are trained pretty well that we know to clean our septic systems every five years. Um, I mean, it's, you know, when, when money spent really goes into what's been spent on planning and, and that goes back quite a way. And that's, you know, you know, getting into, well, you know, well, well, well over seven figures. So that's the money that I don't want to see wasted. Um, but at the same time, you know, not see that wasted. Does that mean spend $40,000, millions of dollars? You know, it's a, it's, it's a, it is a difficult, a difficult conversation. Um, always so, appreciate the town council Matt, on just, page. just sorry matt just to clarify then um when we're talking about the potential with the federal money coming down um mm -hmm. is there a specific you know we had talked about it um a couple of years ago with the budget process we're expending funds for operating budget and we want to make sure they're they're well aligned with capital as well um since mm -hmm. the the project scope is so tied there it's integral um is there a specific project that WPCC would like to make sure that the council is cognizant of when that federal com money comes down? Um, we have tagged already five opportunities for WPCC in town. Um, would it be prudent for WPCC to come back to the council with a rating as to which ones you think are the highest priority or the most bang for the buck um, for the town to address? Uh, we certainly know Rocky Ledge. Yeah. Oops, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. But yeah, I think that would make sense. I think that's a. Um, there, uh, some of them I refer to as low hanging fruit. I mean, Rocky Ledge. As soon as everyone can like wrap their arms around the, the the value in it and the 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 savings to the entire town versus just this this small group of homes that's been contentious in the past for what I feel is absolutely no reason, um, for you know relatively small dollars for you know not having to spend double that amount of money in, in a sewer project someday so that's mm -hmm. that's something that I, I feel we we should pursue um conversations on as far as federal funding that is all fairly new conversation with us because this has been a, a, a you know a tough year to conduct business but um you know we ha i have met with carl to to discuss um you know some brand new fema stuff and it appears that there's a huge outlay to get into a go no go type of permitting situation uh, or a approval situation which is a little bit daunting but um as the, as that as that progresses and people have experience with these with these programs and this quote unquote infrastructure we're obviously uh interested what um you know what the town council and you know state representatives can help us and dep can help us with we're still waiting for DEP to, you know, kind of offer us more help than they have, um, but appreciate your and attention that's, to matters. That's also the part of the conversation with Connecticut Water as well. Um, so, you know, yes. um, we have Mark Richards, who's now on the um, committee. I'm not sure if his committee or board with um, Connecticut Water. That's those conversations. You know, assuming that if it was Rocky Ledge to move forward what their um, contribution to that type of program would be. I think that's as easy as just reopening dialogue. You know, we're all going to be able to continue this type of dialogue, but also sit across the table from each other fairly soon. And that dialogue has been stagnant. Connecticut Water had a lot going on over the last few years, but I think things have probably stabilized to the point can't speak for you, Mark, in the, in the group, but um, have stabilized to the point where we should at least reopen that that conversation um, because there was, Pura had made some changes that were making it look as if um, Connecticut Water was gonna be able to participate in a big way 
in the project at one time, whereas their old model would have been them participating in this project in a very small way based on users, as opposed to you know potential users and us putting infrastructure in the ground for them that's going to help them with their you know 10 and 20 year plans. Um, so that's an action item. Um, it's a uh, it's an action item for for your guys' council and with any support that we can possibly give. So, just um, I I will just thank you, Laura, and the rest of WPCC for the incredible amount of hours you guys put into both the facilities plan and and ongoing. Thanks. You will. Anybody else have questions? Yeah, Matt, thank you. That's an excellent report. Uh, again, whatever we can do to support you, I think I would love to have you come in quarterly and give us updates. Um, clearly, uh, the work that WPCC does is essential to this health, the, te the health of the town. So whatever we can do to support you. And, and Mr. Cameron, I apologize. It's very difficult to find a time. So I hope you can hear me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks, Mr. Brogan. Her heard you. Loud and clear, it sounded like you were underwater, but we, we heard you and, and thank you. Anybody else? All right, nobody else then. Thank you again, Matt and Laura, for all your, uh, your work and all the report here today. We appreciate it all. Thank you very much. And thank you. We look forward to, uh, to coming with, a, with another update sometime, not too, not too far off future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, Absolutely. take care. Thanks again. Yeah, sure. All right, we'll move on now to item number six, which is authorizing the resolution for small town economic assistance program, the Steve program. Um, Carl, can you give us a brief, brief overview on this? So this is the near final step required with the state in order to receive the money that we were awarded under the small town economic assistance program earmarked for uh, downtown facade improvement. Uh, there is a grant agreement that has to be entered into with the state. That agreement has now been submitted. I need a resolution authorizing its execution so that I can send that and a signed copy of the commitment up to Hartford. They will sign it, send it back down here, and when it's executed, we can move forward on the project. So this is the, the theoretical last step in the process. Thank you. All right, so at this point, then we'll look for a motion to approve the resolution authorizing and directing the town manager to execute an assistance agreement by between the state of Connecticut acting by the Department of Economic and Community Development. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make Mark. that motion, Tim. Second. Second, Mark. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, just Christine Goupil. Uh, Carl, can you just clarify the, um, the actual location point to point for the project? I'll take it back to the application. The application was meant for the entire length of the Route 1 corridor from Madison to Westbrook. There is a desire to focus and our priority properties are more in what is the traditional downtown area, uh, which is more, more in the vicinity of the town hall. Uh, that's where EDC has done some preliminary outreach by sending letters to uh, property owners. Thank you. Any other further discussion? Uh, in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. We now move on to number seven, which is the anti fraud policy. Uh, Carl, can you give us a little background on this? Sure. Uh, so, this is a policy statement that's it's not aimed at anyone or anything, uh, it's more of a a good practice as well as something that's coming out as an audit recommendation. Um, auditors have a new standard and it, it's been in place for at least eight years where they have a duty to look for uh, fraud as part of their investigation. When that accounting standard came out, most municipalities passed an anti-fraud policy. Um, it doesn't seem as if Clinton passed one when the audit standard came out. It also doesn't seem as if prior auditors flagged it as uh, an item to act on. Uh, so we have new auditors, fresh eyes, and they're looking at uh, at everything. So 
This is one of a number of items that they had flagged as something that they would like to see the town adopt. Um, you may recall that this has been uh, that Sue in her other finance reports had raised issues of uh, working on uh, audit compliance issues. This is one of the policy items that we need the council to act on um, at least before the end of the fiscal year. So if you don't feel comfortable acting on it today, that's fine. You can act on it at the next meeting, but um, this is really a, a sort of the standard policy uh, to have for how a town reacts to the potential for fraud. It's not meant to be aimed at anyone, uh, nor is there any suspicion of it. It's just a matter of rounding out our policies and making sure that we're doing all the stuff we, we should be doing as stewards of the public dollar. Thank you, Carl. Before we go any further, does anybody have any questions about this? Hi, Christine Gapil. I'm just curious, is this typical boilerplate? Um, was it something that CCM has provided or is it provided by our auditor? Provided by the auditor. Uh, it, it's provided by the auditor and then slightly adjusted based on other policies that I've looked at um, and one that I had a hand in putting together. So um, a lot of it is just sort of basic. It's driven by um, where you think there could be fraud, but obviously you can't be all inclusive of any aspect of fraud. Uh, it's really just meant to give us a guide path and what the what the process would be if um, if there's reason to believe that there's been uh, fraud taking place. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Tim. Uh, I know we have two members absent, but I think that uh, this type of policy we should vote on today. I, I don't see why there would be an objection uh, from anybody regarding this matter. So instead of prolonging it another two weeks, I would suggest that we, we vote on it today. Great. Thank you, Tim. Anyone else? Anyone else? Well, at this point, then we look for a motion to approve the town of Clinton anti-fraud policy. I make a motion that we adopt anti-fraud policy for the town of Clinton. Second. Any other further discussion? Uh, Christine Gopiel again, just um, one last question. <clears throat> the exceptions to the policy, um, the approval process through the town manager and town attorney, um, just because uh, I haven't reviewed any of the other fraud policies that have, have been around the state. Um, is that sort of typical process? It's only a typical process for a town manager community. So obviously it would be different if you're in a strong mayor form or if the town actually passed one of these when it was under the first selection form. So it's usually the CEO is involved. You're consulting with the town attorney uh, to if the level of fraud escalates, you may involve outside counsel or other entities. Uh, unfortunately, having had dealt with fraud very early in my career in Pennsylvania, you could be involving auditors and the like. So it's really just meant to provide the basic framework uh, where you go if there is uh, suspicion of fraud. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion. Thank you. Now, along the same lines, we have another uh, fund balance policy. Yeah, so this is another one that's been flagged by the auditor of the need to codify and update. So there was a policy in place uh, that was adopted by the Board of Finance. Um, it's somewhat dated, uh, so it should be updated to reflect at a minimum the current form of government. Um, but again, uh, the auditors are looking for some kind of updated fund balance policy statement um, coming out uh, before the end of the fiscal year. So uh, this is sort of a high level, giving you a background in terms of why it's good to have uh, fund balance and what 
different aspects of fund balance are. Uh, the heart of it gets to the, the end, which is really how you use fund balance. So again, you're codifying what has been the longstanding practice of making sure that you're targeting it for capital and not for uh, operating expenses. Um, this shoots to have a target of 15% or uh, an amount equal to two months of operating expenses. 15% uh, is the recommendation from our bond, kind of bond advisor. The two months of general fund operating expenses is the boilerplate standard from the Government Finance Officers Association. Um, that's a very high standard and not one that most towns are able to support. Um, it may be an aspirational goal, but at least we're putting it, putting it out there in terms of policy that that would be kind of the upper end of where we want to be. Um, so again, it's, it's just like the fraud policy. It's just something to be updated and added to uh, our current list. I don't know whether prior auditors flagged it, but again, new auditors uh, looking to establish base, baseline. So this is something we want to make sure that we're, we're doing just to codify where we need to be. Thank you, Carl. Any questions on this policy? Hearing none, then we look for a motion to move forward with. Um, uh, sorry, Christine. Christine Gupil. Sorry, I do have a question. Um, I think it'll come as no surprise that I'm not generally comfortable with um, it being 15% uh, total. Um, I just want to clarify that there is. My screen just did something. Can you still hear me? Yes, yes. I just want to clarify that the policy allows for um, uh, both a lowering and raising of the fund balance. So the maximum would be 15%. Um, what would be the minimum percent? As I've said uh, multiple times, 15% is what the advice we have from our financial advisor uh, in terms of where we want to be to preserve our bond rating. So if you want to go less, there should be good, unique, uh, one-of-a-kind circumstances that would drive you lower so your, the uh, town's bond rating doesn't suffer. Uh, so 15% is what we have been uh, advised to have as a policy. 15% is what S&P wants to uh, see, and 15% is where S&P is comfortable for our current bond rating. And, I, and I'm just going to clarify, when I negotiated, um, while I was still the first selectman, the um, the new bond rating with S&P, um, they were quite comfortable with 12%. Um, many other municipalities around the state moved from Moody's for that reason, because they felt as though the 15% was um, beyond what was really necessary for a municipality. Um, I guess from my standpoint, I, I cannot support this unless... You know, I see that statement in writing from S&P saying that they will be reducing our bond rating um, if we do not maintain a 15 percent. It is a substantial amount of money to um, to be holding. Um, and, and so, again, from, you know, this is this comes as no surprise. I know we've been having this conversation for a while. Um, but again, I would really be much more comfortable if I saw that statement. I certainly know Moody's did put that in writing that their expectation was 15% for the bonds that we are currently being held from uh, with Moody's. Anyone else? Okay. We have no other comments then. Look for a motion to approve the town council fund balance policy. I move. A second. Second. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Abstain? Um, okay, council discussion on future projects. Um, this was discussed at the last meeting is something that we would have as a standing uh, agenda item so that 
people in the public can know what the town overall is working on as far as the projects go in our town. Um, I know there's been talk about Pearson and, you know, I think maybe uh, people better understand that we have as a council had discussions, yes, in executive session, but we have been discussing Pearson um, and there are things that we are going to be working on going forward on the town uh, as far as future projects go. I know the um, plan of conservation and development is sort of a guide for us to kind of take a look at these areas where we feel as a town we should be looking at to develop. Um, you know, right now, I believe, obviously, one of the biggest things that we'll be dealing with in the coming months is going to be the Pearson project. Um, so um, I'm assuming that's going to take up a lot of our time, um, you know, going forward. Other than that, I just want to make sure that we leave it open so that council members maybe can review the POs, uh, the POCD, take a look at it. If there's things that they feel that we should be looking at or working on with the town manager, um, as far as sites and projects go in town, that we leave this as an open item on our agenda so that everybody has the opportunity to bring forth things that they may feel uh, that they would like the council and or the town to be working on. So um, again, that's just why this is on here. Going forward, we can have more further discussions about kind of things that we would like to work on as, as, as it relates to the town. Um, and I just think it's a good idea to be open and honest and so that people in the public know what the council and the town manager are working on on an ongoing basis. Anybody have any comments about that? All right, thank you. We will now move on to chairman's report. Uh, real quickly, just one item. I know the past couple of meetings we talked about blight. Um, Carl suggested putting together a subcommittee um, of individuals that can deal with kind of the policy that we want to have going forward within our town. He did discuss a couple of different um, you know, policies that, that the town can engage in and uh, felt that putting together a subcommittee and then having them come to the council with recommendations would be the best path to go. I did send out an email requesting people uh, who may be interested in the subcommittee to come forward. Carol uh, did put her name forth as somebody who'd be interested in doing it. If you are interested in, in um, being part of that subcommittee, please email uh, Mary, myself, so that we know going forward how we can kind of put this group together so we can work on that blight ordinance going forward. Um, number 11, town manager's report. Uh, so you have the written part of my report, um, just follow up on a couple of other items. Uh, just so that you're aware, the Sustainability Committee is looking at the possibility of applying for a grant which would support um, recycling activities in town. They're trying to put together a meeting now to discuss what the scope of the grant would be, uh, what that would ultimately be coming to the Town Council to act upon. The grant is due on uh, June 30th. So once uh, once they've got the scope down, we would be coming to the council uh, looking for authorization to apply for the grant. Uh, either it would, I think the thought process now is either it's uh, recycling education or trying to do something uh, with food scraps at the transfer station. So um, more more will be coming on that front. Uh, as a follow up. Uh, also to the, the last conversation about fund balance, uh, the, our, we've been served by a financial advisor, which was Hilltop Securities. Uh, Hilltop made the decision to close its Connecticut presence uh, right before we were going out to marketplace uh, for the last time we issued bonds. It's a little disturbing when you have a service provider pull the plug on you right on the edge of going to uh, Wall Street in order to try and issue our debt. Um, so it's not something that sat particularly well and uh, tried to have a dialogue with the company for uh, how we were going to be serviced through uh, at least the bond issuance and our, our scope of work. Uh, so we're beyond the bond issuance now, we're beyond the closing, and we're beyond our disclosures. Um, so the intent is going to be that we will end our relationship with uh, Hilltop Securities and move to another uh, financial services uh, entity in order to assist us. Um, the individual that we had been served with uh, previously uh, who worked for Hilltop was let go as they eliminated their Connecticut presence. We would be serviced out of an office in Rhode Island uh, Obviously, there's 
a value to make sure that you're working with somebody who understands the Connecticut marketplace and is dealing with other Connecticut issuers. Um, so uh, the firm we would be looking to move to is an entity that has picked up the, uh, the former Connecticut office of Hilltop, uh, which also existed previously as a company called IBIC, uh, and again, based out of Madison uh, with rich depth of Connecticut experience. Um, so that we can at least have continuity in terms of how we're we're serviced as we issue our debt. Uh, beyond that, we have my update on the River Cod meeting. Um, the regional plan conservation developments moving forward. I know that some of you participated uh, in the rollout meeting, um, so that will it will continue through its process going forward until uh, ultimately it's acted on by the Cod in September. National Hazards Mitigation is finally working its way through the last of its approval process uh, with FEMA weighing in, not taking objection to what's been presented, giving some advice in the exit conference for what they would like to see in the future uh, coming out of this process. Uh, the next step on this particular one is Town Council will have to act to approve the Clinton part of the National Hazards Mitigation Plan uh, once, once it comes out of uh, River Cog, and that would be the, the next step for, for us. So we would then have the plan and we could move forward, try to implement the plan and identify funding sources. And general the conversation about Mira and where the state's going in terms of solid waste policy was part of the discussion, but obviously that's that's something that's more them talking and looking for direction from state which doesn't seem to be forthcoming in terms of how solid waste is going to take the rest and that's it carl uh, christine christine Kupil. uh regarding hilltop securities um i'm i'm really sorry to hear that um they have been really great advisors for such a long period of time for the town um and really intimately understand the community um is there uh, a non-compete, is there an opportunity and whether or not you feel as though um, there's a need to potentially uh, continue working with our current advisor? Um, I, I think you mentioned, was it IB, IBIC? Or have they moved to that organization? Um, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, the Hilltop organization was, in Connecticut was led by Mark Chapman. Um, Mark was let go by Hilltop. Hilltop has a different business orientation, it seems, for the Connecticut marketplace. And it was felt that they weren't making enough money in the Connecticut uh, space. So the office was closed. The entire Connecticut team was, was let go uh, with no opportunity to provide any notification to, uh, to issuers. So for us, that left us uh, midstream in terms of getting ready to issue debt and then realizing that our team wasn't behind us. Um, so Mark has moved on to another firm, and it would be my intention to renew the relationship with Mark in the new firm based on his long experience understanding Clinton, but also understanding the, uh, the Connecticut public issuer space and uh, the depth of knowledge that he brings in terms of comparables to other communities. There is no, there is no non compete. It's just a, a 30 day uh, termination notice. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, Mr. D. Hey, how you doing? Good. All right. Um, hear nothing else then for Carl. We'll move on to number 12, which is the Town Council Committee Liaison Reports. Um, anyone have any updates for us? You know, Eric's been trying to get in and out. Terrible service at the high school. Um, so he's, he does have some stuff he wants to bring forth. But unfortunately, he, he keeps getting cut out. Um, so he is sending his apologies for that. Um, and, but any, what else as far as reports go? We have one report. At this point, then we'll move on to uh, an item that we moved, which was number four that we um, made the motion to move us down. This is the CRAD Board of Directors. Um, appointment, um, as I said previous to Tim, um, making this motion to move it down so that we can all discuss it, um, was that uh, based upon kind of 
the involvement with other towns, um, representatives. I believe Carl would be the, the person that we would like to put forward to represent Clinton. Uh, other towns that are represented through or at CRAD are really the CEOs, uh, head of town. I, I just felt that uh, Carl would be the individual that we would want to put as our representative to CRAD. Um, if there's any other comments about that, um, we can have this discussion. Uh, Christine Dufield. So I, I have been on CRAD for a number of years. Um, I have enjoyed the um, the uh, dialogue and the initiatives that we move forward. Um, there are two seats per municipality on the count on that board. Um, and I know that we um, we have currently Rita Foster as well. For those of you who are not aware, um, she brings a great wealth of information and experience. She also sits on East Shore Health. Or to, she also is employed by East Shore um, uh, Health District as well. So um, I, I understand the need to um, have some continuity with the town manager and or um, with the other first selectmen. Um, but again, it's, it's not consistent. Um, but I do, um, you know, I do understand that and appreciate that. Um, if it, the future, if the position does open up again, I would um, appreciate being, uh, having the opportunity to sit on it. I think um, my current position has allowed me um, some unique um, ability to provide um, information to the public. So having um, both roles that I'm currently sitting on, um, I think has been valuable to our community, especially with the, um, with the pandemic and getting information out there. So um, that is one area which I hope the town will be able to step up in. Um, there was some areas where, you know, I was able to respond a little more quickly on initiatives through the state, again, because of my position. But that would be my ultimate concern, making sure we're timely in providing information out to the public. Anyone else? For a motion then to appoint Carl Kilda to the CRAD Board of Directors. I move. Second. Second. Dennis. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you very much. Uh, right now we will go into executive session of real estate pursuant to uh, Connecticut General Statutes 1-206D and invite Carl and Mary. We have a motion. I move. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Staying? Can't wait till these meetings go live. <laughs> All right, we are now out of executive session to move on to item number 14, which is the Town Beach concession stand lease agreement. Um, at this point, we look for a motion to authorize Carla to move forward with uh, ratifying the lease agreement for the Town Beach concession stand. Do we have a motion? Mark, a second. Tim, any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you very much. And hopefully we'll be back to normal soon. We we'll have an in-person meeting where we don't have to deal with all of this. So at this point, we'll look for a motion to adjourn. Mark, Tim, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Have a good trip, safe trip, Mr. D. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.